एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट द रेफरेंस मॉडल्स देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ रेफरेंस मॉडल दैट इज आई एस ओ एस ए मॉडल एंड पी सी पी आई पी मॉडल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज द रेफरेंस मॉडल इट रेफर्स टू हाउ द डेटा ट्रांसमिशन टेक्स प्लेस बिटवीन द सेंडर एंड रिसीवर हाउ द डेटा ट्रांसमिशन टेक्स प्लेस बिटवीन सेंडर एंड रिसीवर राइट so we are having two types of reference model that is the iso osa model and tcp ip reference model okay so first the osa model is introduced in the network architecture and then tcp ip model came into existence so now the tcp ip protocol is the dominant commercial architecture because it was used and tested extensively in the internet but the osa model was never fully implemented so in this video we will discuss about the iso osa reference model so hi what is the iso iso is a standard organization which is established in 1947 international standard organization and osa is the open system interconnection model so it was introduced in the late 1970s an open system is a set of protocols that allows any two different systems to communicate with each other so regardless of its underlying architecture okay the purpose of the osa model is to show how to facilitate uh, facilitate the communication between two different systems without um, without the network hardware and network software of that particular system So here the OSA model is not a protocol, but it is a set. Uh, OSA model consists of set of layers that establishes the communication and transfers the data between the different layers of the system, and it is very flexible, robust, and interoperable. And remember one thing that ISO is an organization and OSA is a model, network model. so this is the architecture of the osa model so the first layer is physical layer data link layer network layer transportation session layer presentation layer and application layer okay. the higher layer the first three higher level layers are called user friendly layers and the last three layers that is the physical layer data link layer and network layer are called network friendly layers and transportation is the middle layer so the data will be represented in this in the format of packets in network layer frames in the data link layer and the binary bit format in the physical layer and the data is transferred from physical layer uh, from the physical layer of the system 1 to physical layer of the system 2 through the transmission medium which may be wide or wireless the osa reference model uh, is similar to the sending of a mail okay from the sender to the receiver so in the higher level layers the, the letter is written by the person and it is put in an envelope and dropped in a nearby mailbox okay then the letter is carried from the mailbox to a nearby post office then the letter is delivered to a carrier by the post office okay suppose this person that is sender is uh, send, um, sending an letter to a place that is uh, um, suppose hyderabad from bangalore to hyderabad so sender is in bangalore and receiver is in hyderabad so he is sending a mail for he is sending a letter to the receiver so he will write the letter and it he will drop it in a nearby mailbox that letter is transferred to the nearby post office so since the letter is to a another city so it will be transferred from the city bangalore to the city hyderabad to the transmission medium transmission medium here is through the vehicle and the letter is delivered to the city that is hyderabad 
and then it is carried from post office to the mailbox and the letter is picked up and removed from the envelope and read at the receiver side so this is the higher level layer so the user will only interact with the higher level layers okay so this is a some real time example of uh, the task involved in sending a letter which is similar to osm model next we will see the functions of the layers so the first one is the physical layer the physical layer coordinates function required to transmit a bit stream over a physical medium right so we know that physical layer is the first layer in the osa model so it will convert the frames into binary bits such that it will be easier for transmission through the transmission medium so we are having some characteristics uh i mean some of the responsibilities of the physical layer that is physical characteristics of interface and media representation of bits data rate synchronization of bits line configuration physical topology and transmission mode so first of all we will know about the physical characteristics of interfaces and media so this responsibility will consider the transmission media so the the frames are converted into binary bits so these bits must be transmitted to the transmission media it may be wired or wireless so we have to transmit it to the uh, transmission media and here interface means while transmitting the data from the physical layer that is from the system to the another system we may go through some of the uh, interface such as uh, hub switch repeater right so we have to go through these interfaces right so it defines the physical characteristics of interface and media the next one is representation of bits so in the physical layer the data will be in the format of binary bits and data rate so data rate means the transmission rate that is the number of bits sent per second is called a data rate so we consider the speed of the network through the data rate right so that is uh, in kbps megabits per second gigabits per second so that so in this way we will consider the speed of the network next one is the synchronization of bits okay so the data is sent from the sender to the receiver but the data must be properly synchronized here while transmitting the data the data must be properly synchronized right so it must be properly synchronized that means the sender clock and receiver clock must be synchronized here okay if you are transmitting some data that data must reach the receiver in a proper manner in a timely manner so that is called as a synchronization of bits so next one is the line configuration the physical layer is concerned with the connection of devices to the media so we are having two types of configurations that is a point to point configuration and multi point configuration so in the case of the point to point configuration two devices are connected through a dedicated link okay so these two devices only will communicate using that link and in multi point configuration a link is shared among several devices so the next one is the physical topology okay so physical topology defines how the devices are connected to make a network so there are different types of topologies that is mesh topology star topology bus topology tree topology and hybrid topology so these are different types of topologies if you want to know more about topologies watch my previous videos so the next one is the transmission mode so transmission mode means in which mode the data is 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 being communicated between sender and receiver okay so the physical layer defines the direction of transmission between the two devices in three formats that is the simplex mode half duplex mode and full duplex mode so simplex mode is a one way communication and the half duplex mode uh, two devices will transmit each other but not at a particular time and in full duplex mode two devices can send and receive at same time so the next one is the data link layer so 
it transforms the physical layer to a reliable and error free to the upper layer so it provides a hop to hop delivery or no to no delivery okay so in the data link layer it obtains some data from the network layer that is a stream of bits from the network layer and it will convert that particular packet from network layer into frames okay so in the data link layer it is add a header and trailer to the data field okay so we'll know about the header and trailer in the responsibilities of the data link layer so coming to the responsibilities of data link layer framing physical addressing flow control error control and access control so these are the responsibilities of the data link layer so first one is the framing the data link layer divides the stream of bits received from the network layer into frames right so it is going to convert the packets from network layer into frames so it is called as a framing and the next one is the physical addressing so we know that in data link layer the data will be in the format of header data and trailer right so it will be in the format of header data and trailer field okay so in the header field we will be having source address and destination address and data field consists of the message that we want to transmit to a device and trailer consists of the error control mechanisms okay so we will see about this error control mechanisms in the upcoming videos so trailer consists the information of the error detection and correction mechanisms okay so this is about the physical addressing so if a sender is sending the message then the receiver may be within that lan or outside that network right within that network or outside that network so that particular address is stored in the header part so header part consists of the receiver address and to which network the that the receiver belongs to so next one is the flow control mechanism so if the rate at which the data or observed absorbed by the receiver is less than the rate at which data are produced in the sender the data link layer imposes a flow control mechanism to avoid the overflowing receiver so in the case of the flow control there will be a sender which is sending more amount of um, mean number more number of messages to the receiver but the receiver capacity here is very low and the sender is sending the messages very high so at that time there is a Uh, so we need to apply some flow control mechanism so for example uh, if a if a teacher is taking a class for the students for one hour then it is enough but for two but if the but the same teacher is taking the if he is continuing the same subject for two hours then it will be little bit boring and if the same subject is continued for 3 hours then it will be very boring for the students and the students cannot understand or they cannot accept that uh, data right that information that comes from the sender that is the teacher right so this is the best real time example of flow control mechanism so here the sender is sending more amount of message than the capacity of the receiver so next one is the error control mechanism so data link layer adds reliability to the physical layer by the error detection and correction mechanisms okay so if there is, while sending the data there may be a loss of data or the data may get duplicated or the data may be damaged okay so to overcome these problems the data link layer applies some error control mechanisms that is error detection and correction mechanisms actually it is attached to the trailer part of the frame so next one is the access control mechanism okay so when two or more devices are connected to the same link okay the data link layer protocols are necessary to de to determine which device has control over the link at any given time so for a in a network so in a network for a so when two or more devices are connected to the same link then it may be difficult so which device must be provided the access to access that particular link right so access control mechanism will provide that so it will give the control to uh, the particular nodes at a time 
to access the link so the next one is the network layer so the network layer is responsible for source to destination delivery of a packet across the multiple networks okay so it is responsible for source to destination delivery of a packet across the multiple networks okay suppose so there are two types of responsibilities for the network layer that is logical addressing and routing so first of all coming to the logical addressing so if a data is sent from the sender to the receiver so if the receiver is within the network then there is no problem so then there is no need of the network layer but if the receiver is outside the network then so we need to add the logical address of both the sender and receiver and so we need to send the data okay so if the receiver is outside the network then we need the network layer so we need to add the logical addressing of the both sender and receiver in the header part and we have to send the message okay so next one is the routing so when independent networks or links are connected to create internet or a large network the connecting devices called routers switches hubs repeaters so are used to uh, to I mean, to send the packets to their final destination okay so in the internet there will be a number of interconnecting devices like routers switches hubs repeaters like like that right so these interconnecting devices are used to to route the packet from source to destination so each internet packing device will be having their own properties here the network layer provides the end to end delivery whereas the data link layer provides node to node or hop to hop delivery so the network layer is responsible for the delivery of individual packets from source host to the destination host okay so here the data will be in the format of packets next one is the transport layer the transport layer is responsible for source to destination delivery of entire message okay so here the message is transferred from the source to destination with the support of the transport layer so it is a middle layer transportation layer is the middle layer so transportation layer is responsible for process to process delivery of the entire message a process is an application program running on a host whereas the network layer where the network layer consists of the end to end delivery so here the transport layer supports the process to process delivery it does not recognize any relationship between these packets the network layer it doesn't uh, recognize any relationship between the packets whereas in the transport layer so it is considering the relationship between the packets by applying the segmentation and reassembly so some of the responsibilities of the transport layer is service point addressing segmentation and reassembly connection control flow control and error control so first of all the service point addressing okay so we know that transport layer is process to process delivery of the message so process to process means a process means a program running on a system is called as a process okay so the transport layer delivers the message from one process in a source to the another process in the destination okay so for example if you are chatting through the gmail right in a on the so I mean the sender is chatting from the the user is chatting from the a particular system using the gmail and the receiver is also chatting using the same application that is gmail in another system so that means so here there is a process to process delivery right so the two users are running the same program that is the gmail chat so this is the service point addressing this one is called as service point addressing so the communication between the program on sender to the program on receiver is called service point addressing the next one is segmentation and reassembly okay so transport layer considers the uh, it is going to it will divide the given message into multiple number of segments and uh, it will allocate a sequence number for each segment okay so after transmission if there is any loss of uh, the data then it can be recovered easily using the 
segment numbers or sequence numbers okay so that is called as a segmentation and reassembly the next one is the connection control so connection control it may be either connection oriented or connection less okay so in the case of the connection oriented transmission first the sender will request the receiver and then the receiver will uh, it will respond to that it will accept that connection and the data will be transmitted between the sender and the receiver so after the data is transmitted completely then the connection is terminated so this is called as a connection oriented uh, mechanism okay so connection control supports both the both the connection oriented and connection less mechanisms the next one is the flow control and error control so these two mechanisms we have seen in the data link layer the flow control means there is a fast sender and slow receiver so the capacity of receiver is slow compared to the capacity of sender so at that time we need to apply some flow control mechanisms like token bucket algorithm and leaky bucket algorithm the next one is the error control so similar to data link layer here is also a error control mechanism but this error control and flow control are applied for process to process rather than across a single link okay so data link layer means it is a node to node delivery that means that we so we are applying the uh, the flow control and error control mechanism for only particular link but whereas the flow control and error control mechanism in transport layer we are applying this on a process to process delivery okay so the sending transport layer makes use make sure that the entire message arrives at the receiving transport layer without any error so here the error may be a damage or loss or duplication of the data so we are using both the error detection and correction mechanisms here for error control mechanisms so next one is the session layer the session layer is a network dialog controller it establishes maintains and synchronizes the interaction between the communication systems the session layer will establish a session between the sender and receiver so the responsibilities of the session layer are dialog control and synchronization the session layer allows two systems to enter into a dialog so it allows the communication between the two processes on the different system to take place either in the half duplex mode or full duplex mode okay so here the dialog control means the transmission of messages so once the session is established between the sender and receiver then they will communicate with each other so after the communication completes then the session is terminated right so here the dialog control means transmission of messages between the two uh, devices the next one is the synchronization the session layer allows a process to add checkpoints or synchronization points to a stream of data suppose uh, you are downloading a document okay you are downloading a document with 1000 pages so while downloading at uh, after downloading the 500 pages then the internet connection is gone and the download is incomplete okay so by using the synchronization points or checkpoints so after connecting to the internet then the downloading will start from the 501 page to the 1000 page okay so because of the synchronization points or checkpoints okay so we can recover the download from uh, 500 pages to the 1000 page so next one is the presentation layer so it is concerned with the syntax and semantics of information exchanged between two systems okay and the main responsibilities of the presentation layer is translation compression and encryption techniques so here what is meant by translation so the process in um, in the two systems when the two systems are communicating so each system will be having its difficult its own properties right so one system may be a mac os running on mac os and another system may be uh, it may be running on a different os or uh, the hardware will be different or the software will be different so if the two devices are communicating it will each device will be having its own properties right so because different computers uses different encoding systems the presentation layer is responsible for interoperability between these two system these two different encoding methods 
the presentation layer at the sender changes the information from its sender dependent format into a common format and at the receiver side it changes the common format into a receiver dependent format right so next one is the encryption so encryption means it is a process of converting the plain text into cipher text so mainly mainly the encryption techniques are used for the to ensure privacy so encryption means that the sender transforms the original information that is the plain text into cipher text uh, whereas the decryption is a reverse of the encryption so it will convert the cipher text into plain text so next one is the compression technique so data compression reduces the number of bits contained in the information so mainly the data compression techniques are used for the transmission purpose the so transmission of the multimedia suppose you want to send a video to your friend then you will compress that video and then you will transmit that in the through the internet right so compression techniques uh, we are using for the documents videos audios images like that we are using the compression techniques so while compressing the data there may be a, some loss of data okay so the suppose if you are transmit if you are sending a message through the whatsapp then the quality of that image image will slightly reduce if you observe so that means we are compressing the image and transmitting that image through the whatsapp right so that's why there is a, some loss of data in the compression techniques the next one is the application layer so it enables user to access network to access network so the application layer is responsible for providing the services to the user a user can actually interact with the the voice through he can interact the system using the application layer so application means a program right a program or a software so a user will interact with the this voice model i mean he can interact with the system using this application application layer so it enables the user whether a human or software to access the network it provides user interfaces and support for services such as email uh, remote file access and transfer shared database management and other types of uh, distributed information services so some of the responsibilities of the application layer are network virtual terminal file transfer access and management mail services and directory services so the first one is a network virtual terminal so it is a software version of a physical terminal and it allows a user to log on to a, a remote host okay and the next one is a file transfer access and management so in this the user is allowed to access the files in a remote host that is he can uh, make changes or read data or write data okay so here the file can be transferred accessed and managed which is located in the remote host so next one is the mail services the applic this application provides the base for the email forwarding and storage and the next one is the directory services or domain services so this application provides distributed database sources and access for global information about various objects and services so this is about the different uh, uh, layers in the osa model so if you want to uh, remember all these layers then there is a short trick that so you have to use. so if you want to remember all the layers in the osa model this is a trick so please do not touch steve spit alligator so here the p stands for physical layer data link layer network layer transportation layer sessions layer presentation layer and application layer okay so this is all about the different uh, layers in the osa model thanks for watching my video please do like share and subscribe to my channel thank you